Of course, one of the pillars of both central limit theorems and one of the main reasons we need them is to ensure normality, which will provide the basis and the foundation for the theory of what we're doing in chapters 9, 10, and 11. So we need that normality to take place, but if it does take place, then we know shape, center, and spread will work out like we say here. And if it's normal, that also means that we could find probabilities and areas and percents and or we could find p hats or percentiles and quartiles just like we did in section 8.1 and again as per usual we don't need to memorize this it's on our exam notes packet um, so the exam notes packet has p times 1 minus p in fall of 2020 and I will actually change it to match this one and just make a note that q is 1 minus p as per usual so there we go all right, so let's do an example. And as we do an example, we'll remind ourselves how to do all of this. Now in the fall of 2020, I have the wrong word here. So it should say a random independent sample. So just fix that. So a random independent sample of size n equals 876 is taken from a population with p equals 0 0.2. Find the following. I give all the calculator entries and so on. All right, well, you'll notice I have random and I have independent. I mean, we have condition number one and to given to us no problem random independent great what we need is normal so i need to know that the shape oh describing the distribution is shape center spread so let me write those out when they want us to describe they want us shape center and spread All right, well, the shape is going to be normal, but we're going to have to prove it. You can't just say it, you have to prove it. To make it normal, we need n, p, q, which is, of course, n, p times 1 minus p, to be greater than 10. Now, n was given to us, um, it's right here, is 876. And p it was given to us as 0.12. So we have 876 times 0.12 times its complement, which would be 0 0.88. Right? 1 minus 0 0.12 is 0 0.88. Or in other words, 12 and 88 make 100. So I need that number to turn out bigger than 10. Let me grab the calculator. 876 times 0 0.12 times 0.88. You could use parentheses as well as if, if you liked. It's 92.5. And you know what? 92.5 is bigger than 10. Yay. Right. So we proved normal. We didn't have to prove random and independent because they were given to us, or they should have been. <laughs> Sorry. So random and independent were given. Normal we had to prove. Now, center. Right. So we can mark these two as given. Well, the center is the mean of the p hats, and you do need to include those symbols. So it should look like this, mean of the p hats, which was p, and p was 0.12. It's your population proportion. That's your parameter right there. Now the spread is the standard error of the p hat. It's right up here on the formula. It's right there, standard error of the p hat also known as sigma p hat, whichever symbol you want to use. Both of those count. This is kind of um, newer. This is more computer age. Um, last 20 years this has taken over, and this is kind of more old school. So they both work. And it's the square root of p, q over n, which would be the square root for us. p was 0 0.12, oops, 0.12. And then Q, which was 0.88, so I could put a little times dot in here. And Q is 0.88. And we're going to divide that by N, which was 876. All right. Now, just as a warning to you, you want to keep a lot of decimal places for the sigma of P hat. Um, it will help you with your accuracy later on in the problem. So second square root 0 0.12 times 0 0.88 divide 876. 
And again, if you want second square root to make it look like a fraction, you hit alpha y equals, pick number one, and then it will look like it looks on your page, more or less. So it's 0 0.12 times 0.88 divided by 876. If that bothers you, you can put parentheses around these as well and stick them in there, but that can sometimes lead you astray. So it's, it's a multiplication in there. Of course, in Desmos, it's even easier. So I just type SQRT, it brings up the square root. 0 0.12 times 0 0.88 divided by 876. And it actually doesn't matter that it's just the last one. Isn't that interesting? It has to do with multiplication being commutative and associative and all of that. So we get 0 0.010979. I'm actually going to keep all of those decimal places. So that's just a warning to you, 0 0.010979. Zero nine seven nine. So we'll make a little note. Keep lots of decimal places on these ones. Do not round to four decimal places. It's tempting. Don't do it. I'll highlight that note. That way we don't forget it because that'll be very important for us. You want to keep lots of decimal places for your accuracy here. Why? Well, you'll see in about a second. So we want to find, now that is a probability. So we want to find a probability. Let's look up at the decision matrix here. We already know a p hat. We know the p hat is 0.135, and we're looking for a probability. So we're going to use normal CDF. All right, so let's look here. The center of this curve is the mean of the p-hats, which is 0 0.12. 0 0.135 is over here, right? So probably, I don't know, over here somewhere. That's your p-hat, which is 0 0.135. And we want to be greater than that, so we want to shade to the right over here. Okay, so now, how do we do this? Normal CDF. 0.135 already has three decimal places. That's why you need to keep so many. And then we know it's going to be 1E99 because we're going off in that right tail. The center is the mean of the P hats, which is 0.12, right? It's mu sub P hat. And then the spread. I'm not even going to bother with the square root. I'm going to put it in. So 0 0.010979. It's the sigma sub p hat. And you want to keep lots of decimals because you're dealing with decimals all the way along here. So rounding to four would be too inaccurate. You want to keep like six decimal places at the very least. All right. So let's grab our calculators because that's what I just wrote up was the calculator. So second distribution, normal CDF. 0 0.135. Oh, this is convenient. I already had one E99 sitting in there. Remember, it's second comma to get that E, though. And then it's 0 0.12 here and 0 0.010979. And then I'll go down to paste, press enter on the paste, and press enter again to run it. And it tells me it's 0 0.0859. Uh, And of course, if you prefer StatCrunch, which actually I prefer StatCrunch, um, we would go to StatCrunch, we would type in 0 0.12, 0 0.010979, and we want the probability that's greater than or equal to 0 0.135, enter. And there it is. And it notice the picture, you could always adjust your picture a little bit if you did it in StatCrunch, you could make it match this a little bit better. All right, wonderful. Now, 10% of samples would have a, um, proportions, or samples such as these would have proportions smaller than p hat equals what? Hmm. Okay, 10%. So what we're looking for is the bottom 10%. So 10% of samples would have smaller than this. So I'm going to shade to the left. And I know that this area to the left that I'm shading is 10%. And what they're asking is 10% is smaller than what p hat value, right? p hat equals what? 
Hmm. Okay, so let's go to the decision matrix. I want to find a P hat. I already know a percent. The percent I know is 10%. So I'm looking for inverse norm. So this will be inverse norm. My area is 0 0.10. Oop, but I forgot to put my mean in. <laughs> my mean is right here. It's the mean of the p hats, which is 0 0.12. Right, so 0 0.12, that's the mean of the p hats. And then the sigma p hat is the same as it was before. I have to use the 0 0.010979. All right. And of course, if you're on the newer calculators, you can actually add left to this, but in old calculators, it's automatically left. Left is the default. So second distribution, number three, 0 0.1, 0 0.12, 0 0.010979, left, paste. And there we have it, 0.1059. I know what you're thinking. Oh, but wait, it's a decimal. Yes, that's fine. Because remember, the mean was 0 0.12. We're saying that this p hat is that value, 0 0.0 or excuse me, 1059. Let's do it again in stat crunch so you can see it. So 0 0.12 and 0 0.010979, that's fine. I want this to be less than, and I want it to be equal to 0 0.10, enter. And there I have it, 0 0.1059. And look at the graph, it should make sense. 0.12 is in the center, we're over to the left of that, and that region that's shaded, that red region is worth 10%, 0 0.10. And that line where it falls is at 0 0.1059. Right? So this line is to the left of 0 0.12, so it makes sense. I'm actually gonna leave it there. Well, I can put it up here. I'll just circle it to make it more obvious.